So now these are the basic components of a of an energy system and again it's going to depend you know you can you could start off there's a excellent uh, article on a website called buildandarc.net again buildandarc.net under the homesteading section uh, basically it's called what what you can do with your generator set and again if you already have a generator uh, even a small gasoline generator things like that you have the you have a power source for a small AE system and you gotta think about it what are you really gonna do with that generator if something happens alright your gas is probably gonna be limited okay so you won't be able to run it 24 7 alright it would be silly to run it 24 7 because you know bad guys potential looters and such like that it's just gonna draw them into your location okay also the wear and tear is gonna just tear that thing up especially a a, a small like a contractor's grade uh, you know gas generator set or something like that it's gonna wear it out in a real short period of time so again if you just take your your generator set that you you probably more than likely already have and you couple it with an inverter okay and there's smaller units you can get a decent uh, 12 volt trace or Xantrex inverter for about six seven hundred dollars and uh, a battery bank and it doesn't have to be this large of a bank you could start off with four or six uh, even smaller batteries. Uh, we'll we'll visit in one of these next videos another location that uses a slightly smaller battery, uh, the Trojan T105. It's what's more or less commonly considered the standard golf cart type battery and such. Uh, and uh, you can get them usually for seventy-five to hundred dollars a piece. Uh, so you could put together if you already have a have a generator set, have some sort of power source. You could uh, you could basically put together a small system for well under two thousand dollars. And again, this would be something then that you'd be you'd be guaranteed power, okay? And it would it would make it it would free up so you're not running your your uh, your generator 24/7 during an emergency, but yet you could still have power because you can store that. And what you could start doing is over time, going through and adding a solar panel here or there, or adding if your area of the country is good for it. And down here and where we're at in Florida, Alabama. There isn't uh, there isn't really the high high enough wind or consistent enough wind to do any sort of wind power, uh, and we'll we'll look at some some things around here at some of the other systems we have uh, a lot of friends in this area of the country. We'll we'll ex we'll we'll explore some other systems in another in another video, but uh, needless to say, you you really need to know your area. Uh, the probably the more closer to ideal uh, AE source would be something like a micro hydro set. Uh, the way I understand it, uh, these typically put out AC power. So actually, if you had a year-round source, you wouldn't even need a battery bank. Of course, like-minded people are going to probably have a battery bank just because it's you know it's a way to store. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter if you have a huge garden every year. You're still going to be smart to have some food storage because one year that garden may you may have a drought or you may have a problem. So it kind of kind of pertains the same way to uh, to an alternate energy system is you want your battery bank for those days when like today you saw just a little while ago <clears throat> there wasn't much sun out here and uh, even though the battery bank was still pretty strong they're you know still pretty heavy in power there wasn't a lot of sun and the sun just recently came out which is why the uh, the room here got so much so much brighter the other thing you want to consider as well too <clears throat> is protection for your unit and such this is in a, uh, a good concrete uh, building and such like that. Uh, you know, this is something to think about. Um, a small building with a metal roof might help a lot with EMP and such like that. Have your spares, have your backups, uh, you know, spare parts for these sorts of things. Uh, these charge controllers and such, they're coming down in price considerably. Uh, well, we appreciate you watching today. And uh, for Robert Henry and the Survivor Report, we're here on location in Florida, Alabama. And look forward to seeing you again. And again, remember, we kept everything very simple in this video. We didn't use a lot of big words, a lot of slogans, advertising jargon, or technical terms. So there's no need to slam and put a bunch of stupid comments up. Oh, you should have called this uh, LQ581736. You know, we're, we're trying to keep it to the lowest common denominator here. So folks that don't know anything about this sort of thing can, can figure it out and such. And yes, just like Frank reminded me to say again, this isn't the cleanest install in the world right here as far as, uh, you know, the wires aren't in conduit and things like that. But uh, it was the best he could do at the time. And you know what? He's got something up and working. So, you know what? I'm not going <laughs> to... I'm not going to uh, talk any smack when I don't have something up and... If I don't have something up and going. So, 
for Robert Henry and the Survival Report, we appreciate you watching, and uh, we appreciate any questions or comments that you have. Have a good day. See you soon.